Ruby Volume 7, Chapter 3 was pretty fun. Uh, I enjoyed it for the most part, although, of course, there were some things that stood out. Uh, and one thing is the community's reaction, man. The community's reaction. I go to Reddit. I look through the Rooster Teeth comments expecting to find good discussion, good theories. Man, like back in Volume, what was it, 3 or so, the community would have these in-depth theories about like Salem and who she could be and if she's possibly Summer Rose and this being connected to that and that connected to that and that referencing like one little thing from like volume one and like some of the most intricate theories. And to be fair, that still existed through like volume four, although it started to wane in volume five. And now in volume seven, what are what are the theories people are talking about? Oh, is Crow uh, going to get with this man? Let's theorize on if Crow's going to date this, this other guy. Like, listen... That's fine, but the fact that some people only watch this show for the ships says a lot about the show. And you know what? Before I continue any further, I'm going to present to you guys a great piece of evidence because I, you know, I'll, I'll sit here complimenting the show when I think it does something good, as I've already done. I said the chapter was fun um, and that I expected maybe some cool theories out of it. And I look on the social media platforms that talk about this chapter. There's not really any theories in the most upvoted thing. Well, the third most upvoted thing is a comment about Crow dating this other character. So, you know, let me just make a point, though. If anyone asks you, uh, if anyone tries to tell you, rather, that Ruby is doing better than ever, pull up Google Trends. Pull up this graph right here. This is a graph of the highest searches, uh, the most overall interest in Ruby. And you can see that it's certainly declined uh, greatly, greatly. Why is that? Well, I'm not going to get into all that in this video. You can think about the reasons, though, and uh, here's what I will do. I'm just kind of enjoying talking about my thoughts on various things in the show. So I don't know if I'll make reviews for every episode. I don't think I will, and I haven't been doing that. I did one for Chapter 1. But what I will do is when there's interesting things that stand out, I'll make a video on it, and if you guys enjoy that, great. If not, no worries. You don't need to watch, but uh, if you do watch, I, I hope you enjoy. So right now we're talking about Crow and uh, all these people that are trying to force him into a ship when the guy just needs a good friend. Crow just needs a good friend. Uh, he's a loner. He's very upset and depressed about things that have gone on in his life. He is in mourning still, it seems like, when he looks at the uh, picture. And to be fair, so is Tai Yang, it seems. Uh, tai Yang, very much so, stays at home all the time, doesn't really leave ever, gave up being a huntsman for the most part, doesn't seem to go on missions. And we see him at home looking at that picture very sorrowfully of Team Stark. So you have these characters that were quite complex and having a lot going on, and Crow just needs a good friend, especially one whose semblance could somewhat counteract his own. Maybe they could go out and have a drink together and just do things to, you know, escape from how crappy it is to live in Remnant. But instead of that, instead of maybe giving Crow a chance at having a good friend that is desperately needed in his life, people instantly decide to force a romantic interest on all of that. So look at this, man. Here we go. Uh, again, this is like one of the most upvoted posts on the Reddit <laughs> for reviewing this episode. Uh, and this is what it says. Side note to everything, Crow is now shipped with everyone. Let him be the poly bi character he is clearly yearning to become. Ship name Crow X everyone a feast for crows. And uh, they get into it more. Honestly, the look he gave Clover is having me believe that Crow is going to fall for him. And then we're going to learn that the Aesops are actually working against Ironwood. And when Crow finally confronts Clover, Clover is just going to tell him, well, I guess you really are unlucky, aren't you? And then we'll get an awesome fight scene that Crow will win, but still feel disheartened afterwards. That whole thing could happen without the dating aspect. You could have Crow being uh, having a good friend there. It doesn't have to be a date. And you know, man, like... I don't mind there being more male characters dating in this show. What the heck ever happened to Scarlet? I thought that was going to go somewhere. Apparently it never did. But you have Crow, who's already, already an established character. And if you force something on that character that doesn't seem canon and seems out of character, at that point, it's just lazy. Very, very lazy. And Forest. And that's just lame. Let's be honest. That's just lame. It doesn't need to go that direction. Uh, and not everything needs to be shipped. L look. I enjoy shipping. I think shipping's fun. Look on my channel. I have some very out there ships that I've theorized on for the sake of it being fun. Uh, for example, Summer Rose actually being reincarnated in Ruby for a thousand years and Ospin being in love uh, with Summer Rose. And I think that was before like volume five, to be fair. But yeah, man, that's just one example. Another example is like Neo and Ruby, which I think is still actually a legitimate possibility, to, to be honest. Um, and I'll explain that one really quick. Ten seconds. Uh, look, Neo's crazy. 
She's also amazing for a number of reasons that I can't go into. Otherwise, we'll pass 10 seconds up. Uh, but let's just say that Neo loves people who take other people's lives. And when Roman got his life taken by Ruby, although, you know, that was kind of a complicated situation, she became uh, attached to Ruby. So there you go. Now, that's a 10-second version of, like, a 10-minute theory. But there you go. Just uh, an example. But moving on. Let's take a look at some more of these hot takes, man. It looked pretty gay to me, which I'm so okay with if this happens, because one, finally some MLM yay. Again, that's fine. But why Crow? Like, there are characters... Again, I don't want to repeat myself. Let's continue on. Their semblance is balanced out, and Crow can finally live a somewhat normal life, maybe. Crow x Clover is like shipping Crow with happiness. I legit felt so happy for him when Clover said that because it's obvious this is everything he never knew he wanted. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh my gosh. How insulting is that to, to, to Crow's history, man? And then we got a bunch of uh, Rooster Teeth comments on the chapter i honestly hope they do make crow straight uh n excuse me not straight as if if only because it'll piss off the i stand with vic crowd and the gay hating crowd in one fell swoop now well, first of all it's not true there's plenty of gay people in i stand with vic i've met a bunch personally uh you don't know what you're talking about and also this is forcing representation just out of spite that seems like something very bigoted in my opinion you know, representation should be taken seriously, shouldn't it? But here you are using it as a malicious, spiteful weapon. That's pretty bigoted, buddy. Says, honestly, the good luck, bad luck dynamic better end in a little something something because otherwise I'm going to plead queer baiting. Oh my gosh. You guys never heard of a friendship before? Like this is some of the most sad stuff I've seen all day. Notice I said all day for a reason. It's not the most sad stuff I've ever seen. Not even close, but... Man, this is the saddest stuff I've seen all day. These people don't know what a friendship's like. And they, they're like, it's crazy to me. Again, back in the day, there'd be complex theories on this show. Uh, you know, eh, eh, oh my gosh. And let me get on the whole other thing. So many of these comments on the Rooster Teeth side didn't even know that Ruby Semless is not speed. They're like shocked. I'm like, bro, look up. If you, Okay, you guys can look this up uh, on YouTube. Hero Hey, Ruby Semblance. I made a theory back before volume four, chapter one, explaining why her semblance was not speed. And Crow even confirmed later on in Volume 4 that she has the ability to burst into rose petals. How are people still surprised about this? No offense to anyone out there if you are. Uh, if it, look, look, I get it. I don't look into Ruby as much as I used to. If you were just watching the show back then and not like paying attention to all the theories and looking for that kind of thing, I understand. But, I mean, the amount of people on the Rooster Teeth site that were uh, shocked about the Ruby semblance thing baffles me. Baffles me. Uh, they've talked about Rose Petal Burst, and you've seen that it's not just speed. Like, literally, she's able to split her form. Uh, but anyways, I'm getting off topic. Let's move on. I didn't think I could be more gay, but once again, Ruby proves me wrong. Uh, how are you? Wait, what is this? How, are, how does that make you more or less? I don't know. Maybe that's a typo. I just shouted, Crow has a boyfriend. So I guess I ship Lucky X Bad Luck. Dude, that's, like, just weird. Uh, because they complimented each other, and Clover gave, like, a, you know, a cheesy wink. Uh, you're suddenly saying that means that they're BFs? Like, that's creepy to me, man. Like, if a dude gives you a handshake, are you suddenly going to think he's your BF or something? Like, man, what are you going to do? Are you going to hug him? Because that could be, that could be S assault, you know? Uh, certain people who probably agree with you on a number of things would say that. So more, more irony there, man. Look at this. 12, uh, 31. You see those eyebrows raised? I think that's flirting. Dude, this is just absurd. Hopefully not. There you go. Uh, got a feeling Crow is secretly gay, but doesn't know yet. But the new looks are amazing. Crow looks extra fine in his new outfit, and clearly Clover noticed. Smiling with a kiss emoji and a smile. Yes, Blake caught Yang staring and blushed. By the rules of anime, they must now do eat. Mr. Good Luck is so flirting with Crow. These are what, like, I can't, I'm just, like, a little baffled, man. This is their takeaway from watching this chapter. Not the cool fights, not the cool new Grimm, not Tyrion at the end uh, being all creepy, uh, but trying to force ships. That's 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 why you watch the show. That's the only thing you watch the show for is to try to force, force ships on these characters. Um, baffling to me. Really is. So much gay vibes. So Crow has a boyfriend now, right? And then look at this, man. If you have an issue with it, they call you buzzwords. Um, I'm sure I'll get called all, all number of buzzwords for making this video, but you know what? They don't mean anything. You guys have played those buzzwords out so much. They mean absolutely nothing now. You use them for everything. Anyone who disagrees with you is a buzzword. 
doesn't mean anything nowadays. It's pathetic. It makes you guys look worse because you're downplaying serious issues, uh, using them in such joking manners. You know what I mean? Well, not, not joking manners, but using them so lightly. So this guy says, do not force a crow relationship, please. When was crow established as straight? Volumes three and four. No, he was established attracted to women. Buy and pan are still on the table. Straight's only established when someone explicitly voices such. Catch up to the times. It might save you some friends in the future. Bro, you sound so like, why did you be so smug saying that? Oh my gosh, man. You clearly don't understand how nature works. <laughs> Response to the person who's tr trying to sound all smug or whatever. I really hope he isn't. First, a new voice actor who's doing good, by the way. Then this potentially. I mean, man, Crow's character has been getting butchered for volumes. I'm at this point. I don't even, I don't even think I care anymore, man, to be honest. Um, I'll just keep cosplaying Crow in his old outfit and be like, yo, I'm, I'm volume three and four Crow. Volume one, two, three, and four Crow. Uh, the new Crow isn't Crow because, like, they changed his character so much. Now, I'm not going that far yet. I will say they've been butchering it. I'm not going to say he's a different character yet. But if they do force, like, some ship on him, uh, at that point, it would feel like a different character. Because, again, getting back to the whole mourning and complex life issues, that just downplays all of it. It downplays the crazy history that this guy has, the crazy depressing history this guy has. And that would certainly erase his character for the most part. So let's move on. Well, he 100% likes girls. He literally talked about being defeated by a girl's skirt length and also gave the waitress in volume four a knowing look. But that does not mean uh, he does like guys. So bye, maybe. Really seems like more of a bromance to me. It's already been done with Blake and Yang. So yeah, please don't force Crow to be that. All we've seen him is taking interest in women. Uh, no, just turned on for a woman. The cliche about bye is that we'll do anything that moves. In reality, most of us are a lot choosier than that. Okay, this is getting kind of long-winded. Whatever, man. Let's move on. See, this one's interesting. We're almost done here. I just wanted to make a quick video talking about this because, again, I go looking for good theories, and I met with uh, forcing a, a ship. Wonderful. Ruby community really doing great work nowadays, man. Really, really good. So this guy says, please don't try and force Crow into this relationship. I'm referring to RT and the fans. Crow needs a good friend, not a lover. We've already had multiple ships go that way. We don't need to constantly have more. Come on. So this guy says, agreed. Uh, maybe just setting up a point where Crow may learn something more about his bad luck. What if Clover stores extra luck in his pin and touches it for a boost? If true, what if Crow can do the same and makes bad luck pins or something like that? Uh, this could be a good answer for his powers. So, you know, there's some decent discussion there at least. Same, I would like to see them as best friends. Thank you. Facts. So these people were pretty cool here. And this final one, what is this, man? I, I can barely read this, actually. It came out so tiny. Uh, do you mind telling me what gay relationships we've had besides Yang and Blake, straight relationships, Arcos, Renora. Okay, first Arcos like never actually happened. Uh that was very one-sided. I like Arcos because it shows, you know, uh the problems that some people go through in a relationship and uh but what I'm getting at is that it never really happened. Like by the time Jean liked Pira, she was doing her own thing, fighting and then she got minecrafted. Renora, okay. Uh, Weiss and Neptune, dude, that's a reach. What do you, Weiss and Neptune were never in a relationship. You have to reach that hard. All the parents. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, so they talk about, you know, some more of this stuff. Again, I don't mind them having two guys in a relationship in this show, but take like Scarlet or someone who's already looking to roll that way. Don't force it on a character who, to be honest, doesn't seem to have any interest in dating to begin with. Um, Look, Crow flirting with women doesn't necessarily mean he wants to date. He just might have fun. And he may be dated at some point. Maybe the Crow and Summer theories are correct. Maybe they are. But at the moment, the dude is going through a lot of crap and just trying to protect the people around him. The younger huntsmen and huntresses around him. And, you know, maybe help Ozpin come back and do the right thing for the relics. You know, man, there's not always going to be time to, for a relationship. Right now, they're focused on business and that sort of thing. Um... I don't know. I guess I'll wrap this video up. That's all I got on this one. But uh, I'll be talking more about this chapter. There are other things I want to talk about. But I'm not going to spam you guys with video on that today. Uh, probably have another Ruby video coming out tomorrow. And uh, there are multiple topics I want to talk about, actually. So, yeah. Be working on those. I'll see you guys uh, later today or tomorrow. Peace. Hold on a second. I'm actually behind on shoutouts. My bad, guys. My bad. I owe a bunch of shoutouts here. So, I've got like 30 more than 30 definitely more than 30 right here i've got like almost 40 or so so let me uh get started on that shouts out to rogue don uh becca ishra ivory dark raven john the lancaster kid 
Giago, Super Speed, Christian A, uh, V Pelletier, ooh, that's a fancy one, uh, Miserable Pile of Secrets, Joshua B, John, Fun and Reviews, then we got Ishra, Dark Raven, Bruno, Lancaster Kid, John Edwards, Rookie, uh, Professor Chaos, Joshua B, and then we got Bruno, Super Speed, Glenos, John, Rookie, Enkial, and Mashed Up Potatoes. All right, thank you guys very much. I do appreciate helping me out with those shares. Again, it really does help out the channel, and I appreciate it, and I'll see you soon. Peace.